We've got Mike Pereira of Fox Sports, a good friend of mine from a long time. We used to do this uh, every single week on NFL Total tuck Access. Tuck rule, huh? We used to go tuck when rule. When you were the head of NFL refs and I was the host of NFL Total Access, yes. I was tilting at that windmill for a very, very long time, saying get rid of the tuck rule. And They finally admit did it. after I left. Admit it. I got rid of the tuck rule. Admit it. I, I will Admit say it. this. It Please. was a bad rule, and you had more influence over Dean Blandino than I Okay, did. well, yeah. He's the one that got rid of it, actually. Yeah, well, good for him. But it was a the good— The current head that of was, NFL that refs. Was, it was the rule, but it was a bad rule. It now, was a bad do rule. Do you wish that you have what Dean has now, which is the ability to get into the ear of the officials on the site right now? No. Really? No, I don't. Why? Because I'll tell you why. It's because such a crucial component to re reviewing stuff right now, I, Mike. I, I understand that. But I don't think it should be Dean himself. That's my concern about that. Why? Because he is the VP of the fish, of official. He has to answer to the coaches and the team. So he and should if own a mistake it. is made, then it's his mistake. I always felt my role was a buffer between decisions that were made on the, the field. or, And that was my role between the, the officials and the coaches or the presidents or the general managers right. or the owners. Now Dean makes that decision, and if he makes a mistake, credibility becomes an issue. I thought I love that it's centralized. Yeah, I love it, and I think the decisions are more consistent now. But I think they should have taken maybe their two best replay guys and brought them in the office. Nah, and I don't them know. Do I, I like the fact that the head of NFL refs owns it. If you yeah, break I, it, I, I, I you own it. it. I wouldn't want it. And pressure. he's not breaking it. Oh, See, too that's much a, pressure. Too much pressure. I'd love it. And, and I, I, I had think... to stop drinking my wine on the, you know, on those late night games. On <laughs> Wait Sunday a minute. Night Were you hammered night? making some of these decisions? I had a drawer. <laughs> I had a drawer that was filled with Cabernet. I mean, we had a simple rule when I worked there. We Once thought... you got past 8 o'clock, pop the cork, baby. Good for you. Let's take a look at some of the, I think Fox does that still as well, but maybe on no. the, uh, maybe on the entertainment side. No. Uh, let's take a, let's discuss some of these plays that were from uh, week number nine, starting with the last moments, the final throws of the game in San Francisco, not throws with a W, but the last moment of this game where Colin Kaepernick pushes his way for what appears to be a game-winning touchdown with mere seconds to go. But suddenly the officials on the field rule it a fumble, and you could see on the replay that the ball does come loose. My question for you is, if Jerome Boger's crew ruled it a touchdown on the field, would that have been changed to a fumble in your mind, or that would have been st stood either way? Absolutely not. When, when they say stands, I mean, that means whatever they would have called would have remained that, that call. Because they and didn't see enough visual evidence to you, overturn you, it? You didn't have it. I mean, and the one thing that when you get into plays like this at the goal line, you know, here's the deal. If you're on the field, a linesman or a line judge on the line, you have no idea what happened. Right. Because you look at it from above, we see different. But from the sides, it's just a maze of bodies. So you don't see when the ball breaks the plane when it comes loose, and so you basically let the play play out, and if the ball's loose, then whoever comes out of the pile with the ball at that point on the field, they're going to rule that that team recovers. You know, Kaepernick said he broke the plane. He knows he scored. That's what he said. I don't buy it. I mean, you know, he bobbled the ball first, possessed it, then went forward. His knees didn't touch the ground. I mean, that they saw in replay. Um, but did the ball come loose before he broke the plane or after? You can't tell, and so you can't change it. So for fans to understand this moving forward, they ha you have to see, for that to have been overturned, you had to have seen a 49er essentially possess the ball and also see that the ball, when it's possessed, is across the goal line. That would have been the only way that that could have been overturned from a fumble to a touchdown? Yeah, and, and, and then the other element, it's inside of two minutes. So the only way they could have changed this is if they have seen – Kaepernick recovered the ball. If they saw that the ball was loose before, if Kaepernick recovered the ball in the end zone and they had clear video evidence of that before mm -hmm. it went into the scrum, then they could have changed it to a touchdown. But if they would have looked and they saw clear evidence of another 49er player recovering the ball, then it wouldn't be a touchdown because you got to go back since That's it's the holy inside roller two minutes. That's the, the old holy, Dave Casper holy roller rule. The holy rule. roller rule. Crazy play. Let's talk about another play uh, from the New England-Denver game. Phil Simms said that he thought the refs missed Tim Wright blocking Corey Nelson in the back on the Julian Edelman 84-yard punt return for a touchdown. And when you look at it again, it looks like Wright does connect with the five of the 52 on Corey Nelson's back on his left 
sort of, I guess, uh, trap muscle. Mm -hmm. What constitutes a block in the back in your in, in the official yeah. rule book? Well, I don't think this is a block in the back. I think it's what we call a side block. And the and the rule book talks about a player coming from behind, so being in a chase position and then making contact in the back, initial contact in the back. You know, in this case, if you look at it, and that last shot really kind of shows it, the, the, the initial contact's really on the shoulder, on the back side of the, of the left shoulder. And, and again, he's coming from the side, not in the back. And so, you know, you see a lot of these blocks, uh, you know, on punt returns. And, and you don't want that as a block in the back. You want to see something almost between the five and the two before you call it. And again, like I said before, key is coming from a chase position. If you're coming from the side, then that's not a call that's going to be made. Mike Pereira, the uh, former head of NFL refs, as now uh, the uh, zebra maven on Fox Sports, joining me here on the Rich Eisen Show. Ted Ginn Jr. with a huge catch for Arizona midway through the fourth quarter as Arizona is trying to add to their point total, which they eventually did because this was ruled a catch on the field and uh, the Cardinals ran up and snapped the ball before the Cowboys could review it. But it sure looks like that Ginn gets one foot down his right foot on the sideline but before he gets his left foot down in the field of play his right foot may have come across into out of bounds territory and this was not reviewable now that you were taking a look at it you can go to richeisenshow.com if you're listening right now to see it later on or on nfl now video archives but the question is would you have ruled that if you had seen this mike Pereira, and had there been a review of it would you have ruled that a catch when it's all said and done? You know, amazingly, it's supposed to be my job seeing these plays. I didn't pick this up when I watched it well, yesterday. Well, that's why you come on the Rich Eisen show. And I, I knew you would get something like this. Sure. It's a really close play. Now, I, I, I'm a little bit surprised seeing it, that maybe you didn't get the challenge coming from Dallas. They would have had to challenge this. But in the end, I don't think I reversed this, even if the game is stopped, because watch the foot. The toe's kind of up in the air a little bit. Is it down? Remember now, you go under the hood. We talked about this earlier. Yes. You go under the hood with a preconceived notion. What do you supposed mean Supposed to be that? unbiased when you're, you know, officials are supposed to be unbiased. But when you go under the hood, you go under the hood with the preconceived notion that the call on the field was right. And you have to 100% prove that the call is not. And if you can't, if you don't have that indisputable evidence, then you leave it the way that the uh, that that the way that it was ruled Are on the field. Are you saying which officials go under the hood with an idea of what they should be seeing, as opposed to open mind? You're saying officials don't go under the hood with an open mind. They do not go under the hood with an open mind. I mean, you go, and, and this is the same way in college too. You go under the hood with the assumption in your mind that the call on the field is right, and so then. When you look at the video, then you actually have to be proven by the video that the call is 100% wrong. Call it indisputable, call it whatever you want to call it, but you have to look at it, it has to jump out at you that the call is wrong. And in that particular case, if Blandino would have looked at that play in New York, I think he would have dissected that right toe there and said, look at it, it looks like it might be up when the, when the other foot touches down, and we're going to leave it as it is. And I think, you know, people in San Francisco, they got the the tough end of these replay reviews, both at the end of the first half and at the yesterday, second half about. yesterday. Uh -huh. and, and really, it's the old rule in the field stands because you might think that it was a safety at the end of the first half, but where was the contact? Where was the ball when the contact was first made? Was it in the field of play? No shot. You have to stay. So you're not, you're biased. I mean, I don't know you. Everybody say, all oh, officials are biased. Well, they're not biased, but they are biased when it comes into replay. Well, they're not biased because it, that they're, that they're, they're rooting for a specific Absolutely outcome not. depending on the teams well, that are playing. Well, they're rooting for themselves to be right. Because right, yeah. they don't want to get downgraded or anything right. along they're that rooting, They're rooting for themselves to be right. But did refs get downgraded for for requiring replay to correct a call? Well, did they get downgraded the, for that? You know, I'm not there anymore, but I, I think it's still the same. You don't if they're so close that it's it's really almost impossible to tell. And sure. it's a real tough play. And, you know, because when we put it in, the old system, 86 to 91, we all hated that system. Right. Just hated that system because it was punitive to them. There were so many stops. There was no control in the numbers. And we brought this back in 99, and we wanted the officials to like it and, mm -hmm. and, to, be, and to be supportive of it. So basically we said, look, if you can go in and you can make a decision that corrects a wrong, 
then we're going to give you credit for getting the original call right. So that really helped them to buy into the system. Well, that game play was huge because Arizona scored a touchdown from there, and they they won the game uh, going away. And uh, Carson Palmer is going to join me on the next hour of the Rich Eisen Show. Before I let you go, I want to take a look at a play from college. Huge SEC play with huge national championship wow. uh, seeding implications. Wow. And this is uh, the last play of the year for Laquan Treadwell, the superb Ole Miss wide receiver who has ruled a a touchdown on the field of play against Auburn to put Ole Miss up, but then after further review, ruled a fumble before he got into the end zone and broke his ankle, which is why he fumbled the football. Now, there are some in Mississippi saying that due to his ankle breaking, his ankle was on the ground before the fumble, and thus the broken ankle means he's down by contact. What do you say in response yeah, to that? Hor- horrible play, and I even hate looking at the video of the ankle break, but here, here's the notion, and I know what they're saying in Mississippi, but the actual thing is your foot, the ankle is a part of your foot. So if you're going to go to the leg being down, you've got to get to the shin mm-hmm. in order for it to be down. Same way with the hand. You know, the hand includes the wrist. So if that you're going to say somebody's down, you have to get to the forearm. The wrist doesn't put you down. Unfortunate play, great player, and again, huge ramifications. Sure. But, you know, I would say this now, without instant replay, this would have obviously not been changed, and this is probably one of the biggest calls in replay in college football that I've ever seen. Incredible. And, um, again, for folks to put in their mind's eye, Mike Pereira, uh, elbow is down, but forearms down before the elbow. Sure. So if you see a forearm or a shin go down, it doesn't mean matter if the elbow or knee is up. You're down if the shin or the forearm goes down. I feel like I'm still educated. I listen to you. Progress. I've been listening to you for a year. Good to see you, it's Mike Pereira. Good you. to see you, Mike great Pereira. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern. On Audience. <laughs> 